Glory to his name. Here we are another first Sunday, communion Sunday. We can commune the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, somebody. He is the Alpha and the Omega. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Our Father and our God, so we come before you asking God that all that we do be pleasing in your sight. We thank you for another day's journey. We thank you, Lord, that you've brought us to another month, another day in time, first Sunday, where we can commune with you. Pray, Lord, that the rest of our presentation, Lord, be acceptable in thy sight, for you are our strength, you are our redeemer. These and all the blessings we ask in the mighty name of Christ. Amen. Amen. We thank God for Another day where we can look at his word and perhaps uh, pull from it to carry us the rest of the week. It's able to do so. He is the first and the last, the Alpha and the Omega. We're grateful unto him for waking us up and starting us on our way. Amen. He gives you all the glory yes. we worship you O Lord you are worthy to be praised we give you all the we worship you, O Lord. You are worthy to be praised. Amen. We thank you uh, once again for meeting us here on the YouTube channel. Amen. Those of you who have your Bibles um, and want to follow along, or I, I hope and pray that you uh, you read this entire uh, First Thessalonians book, New Testament, Amen, beginning at chapter five, First Thessalonians chapter five, and move down, verse sixteen. 17 and 18. Amen. Be fine to say amen. All right. But beginning at verse number 16, it says, 
Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. I want to talk to us this morning about being thankful. All of us have something to be thankful for. Amen. There's, there's a whole lot of talk today about the conditions of our present state. We who are part of the body of Christ know that all of our heart and all of our being, there's nothing under the heavens that are new. No, no, that we have come and we will worship God. Worshiping God uh, comes out of our experience with God. You worship God out of your experiences with him. Your personal moments with God will and ought to show up in your worship. When what we have experienced and what you have experienced with God comes alive in you, your worship can be seen as a sign of thanksgiving. And with every great why in life, there ought to be a following of a great how. Why do you long so much to come and to go back to the church house on a Sunday morning? Or do you do it out of habit because you've done it Sunday after Sunday? Or do you want to show up to really worship as a group where two or three are touching and agreeing? Why do we get up every week with an anticipated hope to enter into the same place and sit in the same pew, sing some of the same songs and look at the same people without fail. This is a new day with a new way. The only way to truly worship is out of what you've been through. Now, uh, you might be able to tell or to give somebody else's testimony. I think the George Floyd family surely uh, have their own testimony. But it's not your testimony. It is not your preach. Mm, you, you can carry on uh, like you see others carrying on. But if it's not out of your own experience of life with God, all of what you do, and all of what you say is to be a part of what others want to be. Perhaps something phony, perhaps something uh, fake or untrue. But when God has really been good to you, when God has really brought you out, your worship takes a turn and your worship has flavor. It's no longer just a repeat or just to go through the motion. Your worship becomes a why you worship. I think the songwriter said, said it best when he said it, 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 could, have, it could have been me outdoors with no food or no clothes. But God did not see it fit for those things to happen to me. So I worship him, not because I've been so good or because I've, I've been so careful, because God is sovereign and he can do whatever he wants to do. You and I ought to get excited about the how. I know we, we want to get back and flood the, um, the, worship, the worship area that we have been in for, for, for days gone by. And I know why I want to worship in such an environment. I think the Apostle Paul tells us how we ought to come and to worship God. He says, first of all, we ought to come rejoicing. Rejoice evermore. Always being rejoicing. Always being excited. Full of joy. <laughs> so we ought to pray continuously without ceasing. Not for everything, but in everything we ought to do it. Not, not, not grateful for what ails, ails us, but grateful for how we go through what ails us. 
I'm not grateful for the storms, but I praise God in the midst of my storm. And Paul says that the Christian life has some character connected to the experiences with God. Verse 16 shows the first of the Christian character. It says that that character is to praise. Yes, rejoice forevermore. Paul never wanted you to deny the circumstance or situations in life that can bring uncomfort to you. But he goes farther in Romans 12 and 15. He said, rejoice with those that rejoice. But to weep also with those that weep. But to recognize that through it all, can somebody say through it all, there can be hope in the midst of what seems to be hopeless. And it may look dark, but joy comes around the corner. Not happiness, but joy. See, because happiness depends on happening. But joy is in spite of what's happening. You got to handle life like you've got some sense. I really can't stand uh, to have to talk to somebody that knows everything. You perhaps know somebody like that, no matter what the subject is. They know more about it than you know about it. I was sharing with a co-laborer. Uh, about some of the experiences that I've been going through with the YouTube and the Zoom and all of the, the, the technical things that, that, that have to be present when we're programming and, and trying to program Bible studies and, and so forth so that our presentation uh, may, may seem effortless. And when you know that that person began to tell you of all the places you need to subscribe to and uh, who most definitely has the best of this, that, and the other. Don't get me wrong, information I think is very vital, but it's, it's always that one individual that knows everything and really they don't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> one thing I do know that happiness uh, comes and goes. Happiness depends on happening, but joy shows up in your facial expression. Joy shows up in keeping uh, six feet away or more, not because I don't want to embrace, but out of respect for needing that space and attention to our current environment. Oh yes, that does not matter, it seems to some, what we're going through today. If everything is falling around us, it seems to not matter to some. There are some who still don't wear face protection. Some who still think it's not necessary to put on gloves on their hand. Yeah, you still want to go to the church house and still want to hold hands. You still want to touch and agree. But I declare that what matters is that you thank God that your worship and your joy is not dependent upon that. Real joy is connected to going to Jesus. Oh yes, you, you can't tell me you met Jesus and you don't have any joy. It's impossible, I tell you, to stand in the rain and not get wet. Mm, it's impossible to be in the presence of the Lord and still hope somebody comes around and comes into your life to make you whole and to bring some joy into your path. I declare like the old saints of oh, old, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I get joy when, when I think about how on Saturdays back when I was coming up as a boy, we would, mama would cook and we would hang our clothes on the door, which meant that we were only getting ready for preparation for worship on tomorrow. I grew up around old folk in the South. And I tell you, I, I miss them uh, tremendously in my life. They've gone on to the church triumphant and left us here uh, in the church militant. They've gone and they have left behind an opportunity for us 
to show what we have and to give God our very best, no matter what's going on. Somebody can remember how, how you got excited about getting ready to worship. Oh yes, we, we would get up and iron our clothes, get ready, put a little polish on our shoes, and we would anticipate being there all day long. We were wore out from putting our all into our service. I don't understand how some folk today can leave the worship experience just as refreshed as they did when they got there. I can't understand it. I, I, I did not know that coming to church was a spectator sport. But many today are going into the sanctuary only to spectate when God really wants us to be a participator. Real worship, I tell you, is not a spectacle or, or an event to come just to look and to gather uh, information to say who or did not do uh, and brought the best song of the best sermon. When you go, you ought to go to clap your hand, to say amen, and to give God some praise. I tell you, I get joy when I think about what he's done for me. I've come to give God my best. I want to give him my best song. I want to give him my best Shout. I want to give him my best dance. This could be my last day. You don't know uh, if God's going to call you sooner than later. So you ought to want to rejoice while you have time. Rejoice forevermore. Then secondly, verse 17 says, pray without ceasing. Pray continuously. Prayer was not to be prescribed just for a particular time or a certain day of time, but rather it ought to be a constant and a common ready place in our lives. Praising and praying continuously does not mean that we walk around mugging folk and scaring people in our pathway. No, no, that's, that's not what it means. But here's what it means. It means that it's in you to do. What is, Reverend? It, uh, the, to pray without ceasing. It's like a person that's got a cough <coughs> that bothers them. Uh, and, and, and they cough, not all day, but when they do cough, uh, it's like a little tickle in the back of their throat. They cough into their sleeve. Amen. But, but, but they, and they're really just there to clear their throat. Yes, you're not praying all day. But if you need to, it's just like uh, that cough that's in the back of your throat. You're not praising all day, but when God lets something come your way, a praise just jumps right out, right up out of you. It's right there in the back of your hallelujah. It's right there in the back of your, thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, people that you know, know not to come around you on your job, talking about the Lord because you don't want to lose your job. Amen. You get excited every time you hear about the law. When I'm driving the bus, please don't talk to me about the good law because I, I need to keep both hands on the wheel. Don't talk to me uh, right away about the good Lord while I'm cooking because I'm bound to burn up my food. Oh, yes. I, I thank God for his His will and his way. Well, I, when I come down, when it comes down to praising the Lord, somebody ought to show some sign. You better believe that what's, what's happening in your spirit will show up in your flesh. Oh, yes. One way you know that people are suppressing that praise and suppressing uh, um, uh, the God that is within their worship is when they began to be boastful and pride, prideful about what they're doing. I tell you, that will suppress your praise. Hatred in life will suppress your praise. Judgment, envy, and lust will suppress your praise. 
Yes, God wants you to get out. And God wants you to get that praise uh, out of you. Oh, yes. But he's got to get some other stuff seemingly out of our way before we begin to praise him. And the praise of flavor began to flow from our every being. You can't walk around hating policemen and expect to praise God with all of your heart, mind, body, and so you can't have an attitude against a deacon or a deaconess uh, trying uh, to, to lift up your hands and to give God uh, all of your praise. Oh, yes, you know that your praise has flavor because of what you've been through. Storms make you praise. Trouble and mess brings out a great praise. Thank God for his mercy and thank God for his grace. If your praise is real, it happens no matter where you are. You can praise God while riding down the street in your car. Oh yeah, you praise him at the grocery store or even in the rooms of your dwelling place. Yes, go look in the closet. Uh, and if you're not careful, you praise God when looking for something to put on. I dare you to open up the refrigerator and just take a look around uh, because you'll begin to praise God uh, for all of what is inside of your refrigerator. Mm. Aha, uh -huh. praise him. Uh, when you look in the mirror, yeah, and look back uh, over your life uh, mm, when you did not have uh, what you have now. Uh, and remember uh, when God stepped through the door mm, with his arms uh, full of everything uh, that you need on this pilgrim journey. Yeah, uh, God has everything uh, that you need uh, and we need uh, everything that God has. Yeah, if I were you, I wouldn't suppress it, but I'd let the praises come forth. And then finally, in verse 18, in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Thankfulness is the opposite of complaint. Oh, yes, I I could complain, but I won't. Yes, I, I could use uh, the opportunity right now to tell you about all of the woe in me. But when I put it in a balance uh, and weigh it out, uh, all of my good days uh, seem to outweigh my bad days. Uh, and I won't uh, complain. Thankfulness uh, is the opposite of complaining because when I put my blessings next to my complaints I realize that I need to let the world know who and where all of my help come from yeah the world is complaining about how they're being treated right now especially we who are part of black America we're concerned but Yet I hear many complaining about the way that we're being treated in this society. I dare you to go back and to open up your Bible and to see how God's chosen folk always had what seemed like a knee on their neck. Yes, and they prayed for God to send a deliverer. And I'm so glad today to know that God has sent a deliverer. Yeah, he is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, and he's coming back again. And you don't need to worry no, about uh, how he's going to, to deal with the world because on the left and the right hand side, uh, 
There'll be those who are separated. Uh, yeah, and God's going to judge uh, from the throne. Uh, yeah, you thank God uh, that he had brought us uh, through the bull corners uh, of yesterday. Uh, yeah, he brought us through uh, Jim Crow uh, and being called a boy, no matter how old you are. But through it all, uh, God had brought us and is bringing us through. Uh, we still uh, live in a land uh, that had no real uh, justice for us. Uh, yeah, but I heard uh, David right uh, over here in the Psalms. Uh, he said, yeah, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, uh, I fear no evil. Uh, I'm grateful. Uh, to God uh, and not uh, embarrassed uh, to praise him uh, from whom all uh, my blessings flow. Uh, praise him uh, in the morning, uh, in the noon, uh, and in the evening time. Uh, don't pay me no mind. Uh, no, I just got to praise him uh, because God uh, has been good to me. Yes, he's brought me and he's brought you from a mighty a long way. Thank God. Oh yes, for his goodness and his mercy toward you. I'm sorry. I'm just a country boy and I get excited every now and then about how good God is in spite of viruses and in spite of having to have to have distance. I, I'm so glad that he's closer to me. Yeah, then my undergarment. Yeah, he told Abraham, Abraham, I'm I'm your buckler and your shield. And I declare that God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Yeah, there's going to come a time when we're going to have to go back into the church house. But I pray that when we get to that time to go back in, that we bring in the church that is within us. Oh, thank you, God. For such an opportunity to be thankful. We thank you, God, for blessing us in spite of. And we are thankful beyond giving. For Lord, if we if we were really honest about it, you have you've done more for us than we do for ourselves. We appreciate it all. Pray that God will lead us to lead others unto Him. Amen and amen. We hope and we pray that the rest of our day be a continuous one in prayer, that we might rejoice evermore. We want to take this time to prepare to commune with the Lord. This another first Sunday. Uh, if you don't already have your communion ready, maybe you can pause uh, the service right now and go get it. Amen, and come back as we prepare to worship the Lord and to serve him in our communing with him. Amen. This bread that has been set aside represents the body of Christ that was broken for us. I ask that we might together take this bread and eat together. The cup that represents his blood that washes away the sins of the world. Let us drink together. Repeat after me, Lord, I remember. Surely we ought to remember from this day forward, what the Lord has done for us. And as often as we commune, we do show what he has done. Not only what he's done, but that he's coming back again. May the Lord bless all of what you are and all of what you might become for him, and for the sake of the kingdom. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.